What does it mean to be born again? It's common to hear religious people say they have been born again, but is this a scriptural idea and what exactly does it refer to? Let's investigate that during the course of this study. First, let's understand you must be born again. The idea of born again is directly from the Bible. In fact, the Bible speaks of being born again in more than one passage. Let's consider two specific Bible references to get started in this Bible study. First, the more well-known of the two passages is found over in John chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. In that passage, it says, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. The second of these two passages is over in 1 Peter chapter 1, in verses 22 and 23. It says, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Now, in the first passage, Jesus plainly states in teaching Nicodemus that you must be born again. And then in the second passage, Peter has been addressing Christians, even speaking about the hope that they have of salvation in heaven, as you can see in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 12. And then notice that these who were in possession of such a great hope had been born again. Now, given the necessity of this new birth, let's begin to consider some basics of being born again. Why must you be born again at all? The, the obvious answer is because Jesus commands you to be born again, as we saw in John 3, verses 3 through 6. Still, as you search the scriptures, you can observe some definitive reasons why a new birth is needed. First, let's observe the fact that Jesus said this new birth is necessary because in the language of John 3 and verse 3, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. As Jesus lived on this earth, he taught concerning the coming of his kingdom. In fact, Jesus promised that there would be some who were living at that time who would not die until they saw the kingdom of God, as you can see over in Luke chapter 9 and verse 27, repeatedly in the scriptures. The kingdom of God is seen to be the church Jesus promised to establish. For instance, you can notice how the terms church and kingdom are used interchangeably over in Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. The church of Christ fulfills all of the prophecies that were made concerning the kingdom of God. And then after this church was established in Acts chapter 2, the apostle Paul wrote concerning those who had been conveyed into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, Colossians 1, verse 13. So the fact that it is that you cannot be part of Jesus' kingdom and his church until you are born again. This is significant because God's kingdom is composed of those who are in a saved condition. For instance, over in Acts chapter 2 and verse 47, it says that the Lord was adding to the church daily those who are being saved. Second, as you think about why you must be born again, you must be born again. This new birth is necessary because the old man is corrupt with sin. This point explains why one who is not born again cannot enter the kingdom of God. He's still living in his sin. For instance, Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 through 21 speaks concerning the works of the flesh, that is, the sinful things that are done whenever you live to please your own fleshly desires. These works of the flesh include the sins of adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, jealousies, selfish ambitions, envy, murders, drunkenness, etc. And then the passage clearly states that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Therefore, those who are living in sin are not fit for God's kingdom, who will inherit eternal salvation in heaven. Ephesians chapter 4 pictures the matter this way. 
in verses 22 through 24, it instructs that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You could go over to Colossians chapter 3 and see that it contains the same kind of language. In that chapter, Paul instructs that the old man of sin must be put to death, and the new man of righteousness must be put on. As long as you live according to the sinful ways of this old man of sin, you are separated from God. Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2 states that your sins separate you from God. This is because God is completely holy, and he cannot be in fellowship with anything that is evil, according to 1 John chapter 1, verses 5-7. through 7. This is a condition of being spiritually dead, as you can see over in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. And if you die physically while you were living in sin, you will be separated from God by being cast into hellfire, the second death, as referenced over in Revelation 21 and verse 8. Therefore, since the ways of the old man are contrary to the ways of God and result in spiritual death, you must put off the old man in order to put on the new man who is patterned according to God's ways of holiness and righteousness. But how do you experience this new birth? Jesus identifies two elements that are involved in this new birth. In response to, Jesus, in, in response to Nicodemus's question, about how a man can be born when he is old, Jesus said over in John 3 and verse 5, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So let's consider both of these elements that Jesus identifies as being involved in this new birth. First, consider what it means to be born of water. This is a reference to being baptized or immersed in water. Baptism is repeatedly identified in the scriptures as being necessary for salvation. For instance, Jesus said over in Mark 16, verse 16, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. In Acts 2 and verse 38, in response to the question of what shall we do, Peter said, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 22 and verse 16 records how Saul was instructed to arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Galatians 3 verses 26 and 27 says that you are baptized into Christ. And 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 20 and 21 says that baptism now saves you. The scriptures could not be more clear in the fact that baptism is required for salvation and, it is, a, and is a, an essential part of the new birth. Over in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, in comparison with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, Paul wrote that the one who's a Christian has put the old man of sin to death, has been buried with Christ in baptism, and has been raised to walk in newness of life. Therefore, you cannot be born again and live in newness of life without being baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Second, as we think about these two elements involved in this new birth, consider what it means to be born of the Spirit. Upon investigation into the teachings of the Scriptures, it's revealed that the Holy Spirit was responsible for revealing the will of God to mankind. And you can see that over in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 16, in Ephesians 3, verses 3 through 5, and John 16 and verse 13. He accomplished this by revealing God's will to the apostles and prophets. And then these apostles and prophets wrote the things revealed by God's Holy Spirit that we now have in the words contained within the Bible. This is the reason why we can understand the will of God whenever we read the scriptures, as you can see over in Ephesians 3, verses 3 through 5, and Ephesians 5 and verse 17. But notice the passage about being born again in 1 Peter 1 and verse 23. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. How were they born again? It was through the incorruptible seed of God's Word, that which the Spirit revealed. Peter's instructions here 
is not different from Jesus' instruction in John 3. Instead, being born of God's Word is the same as being born of the Spirit. Whenever you obey the teachings revealed by the Holy Spirit in the, the pages of God's Word, you are born of the Spirit and born of the Word of God. Therefore, this involves believing and doing everything God's Word teaches you to believe and do in order to be saved. Namely, God's Word teaches that you must hear God's Word, Romans 10, verse 17. You must believe in Jesus, John 8, verse 24. You must repent of your sins, Acts 17, verse 30. You must confess Christ, Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. And you must be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, Acts 2, verse 38. Finally, not only should you understand why you need to be born again and what is involved in being born again, but you should also understand the results of this new birth. The Bible teaches that this new birth will have a tremendous impact on your future. First, this new birth means that you'll live in a transformed way. As we've already seen, you must put on the new man that's patterned after God's holiness and righteousness after you have put the old man of sin to death. Therefore, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17 calls the Christian a new creation because old or sinful things have passed away and all has become new. Furthermore, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9 says that whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Now, this doesn't mean that, th that it's impossible for a Christian to sin, as you can see over in Galatians 5 and verse 4 and Acts 8, verses 14 through 24. Instead, it means that as long as the Christian chooses to live according to the instructions of God's Word, he or she will be living in ways that please God and will not be living for sin. Second, this new birth means that you'll be saved. This is the ultimate hope that's produced by the new birth. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-9 through 9 describes how that the Christian has been born again through the mercy of God and through the resurrection of Jesus Christ to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. So what does it mean to be born again? If you want to be part of God's kingdom and be saved eternally, you must be born again. If you want to be born again, you must be born of the water and the Spirit. And then if you are born again, you will live in a transformed way that is patterned after God's holiness, and you will be saved eternally in heaven.